Hi, welcome to Dean's Kitchen. My name is Siobhan Ingram and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a delicious batch of treacle scones. Now, some of you may have picked up our original scone recipe, which we posted on our Facebook and our Twitter and our YouTube channel probably about two years ago now. And it's just been incredibly popular. And I think at the latest look, we had just over 28,000 views on YouTube. So there's obviously a lot of people out there trying to find a good recipe for scones. So if you haven't looked at our original recipe, please, please have a look at that because it's obviously very good and very popular. So that's great. Um, but we thought, let's show you something different um, in the scones department. And we've now got this lovely recipe for treacle scones, which traditionally are quite popular around about uh, Halloween time. And Halloween's later this month, so we thought it might be an opportunity to show you a good recipe for treacle scones. And we've also got a very nice way to serve these, which we'll, I'll come on to later at the end. So let me start off by showing you how to make the scones first of all. Now in the bowl here, the usual uh, ingredients to start off a scone mix, we've got some self-raising flour and butter and some sugar for sweetness. So what I'm going to do now is just go in and rub in the flour into the fat and sugar until we've got something that looks kind of like breadcrumbs, that kind of texture. So off we go. The butter is not too soft it's kind of just at room temperature and no more um not not too soft otherwise a bit greasy and a bit soft to handle so really what you want is sort of butter that's just kind of slightly plastic you would say maybe in texture not too not too cold and not too soft so what you do is you lift it up out of the bowl like so as you rub it between your fingers and this helps to break up the fat into nice small bits and puts it right right through the mix and makes it um evenly distributed and it also, if you lift it up like this, you're getting lots of air into the mix as well, which gives you a nice light scone as well. So just using your fingertips, lifting up and down uh, and keep going like this until you've got all the butter mixed in. This will take you back to school days when you did cookery at school. That's where I first learned to do this. I remember it well. Um, so keep going like this until you've got it all mixed together. So here we are, we've rubbed in now for a couple of minutes and we've got, as you'll see, something that resembles quite fine breadcrumbs. So the fat is all mixed in evenly through the flour and the sugar and we're ready to move on and add the rest of the ingredients. So next up in this little bowl here, I've got some baking powder, which you could actually add in at the start, and some mixed spice and some ground ginger. So we're going to add those in as well and just mix them through like so. And then I'll tell you what liquid we're going to use to bring this together into a nice scone dough. Right, so in the jug here, we've got a mix of milk and black treacle, um, or molasses, some people call it as well. So basically what you do is weigh out your treacle and your milk into a glass jug like this or something, a bowl or whatever you've got. and just keep mixing the treacle is really thick and very sticky i'm sure you'll know if you've ever handled it before but if you keep mixing into the milk it does eventually all dissolve in and you're you're left with a very nice dark liquid which we're going to use to bring the scone mix together so that's it just about there just make sure we've got all the treacle off the bottom so that should do it i think okay so get rid of the spoon and just make a little bit of a well in the centre and pour in most of the liquid. Keep a little bit back because, you know, flour varies uh, from batch to batch and also you know, the temperature of your butter can vary the amount of liquid that you require to bring it together. So I'm just going to just keep a little bit in case we, we may not need it. We'll see how we get on. But you're just really wanting um, a soft dough. And the other thing you might notice with this dough as well is as you work it, don't panic if it starts to look really, really soft and gunky because I know we're going to have to sort of roll this out and it does look very, very soft. Um, but it will sort of come together and stiffen up a little bit so you're left with something that you can actually roll out. We've now got a nice scone dough, very soft, probably softer than a traditional uh, scone dough, but 
hopefully workable. Now I haven't used all the liquid, so I've got a little bit left, but we're just gonna put that to one side. Uh, we don't need it. And what I'm gonna do now is tip this onto a well-floured surface and we're gonna cut out some shapes. So I've got my dredger here. So plenty of flour. Right, and just tip this out. like so. And then some flour on your hands and just bring it together. Don't handle it too much. It's like any scondo. You really want to handle it as little as possible because if you are too heavy handed and you do need it like a bread dough, you'll end up with something really tough and quite chewy. And you want some nice uh, light textured scones is what you're looking for. So as you can see, it is soft, but plenty of flour. Um, just to bring it together and make it easier to handle. And then I've got my rolling pin here, so again, a little bit of flour onto it, and just roll out to probably mm, a couple of centimetres kind of thickness is about right, because if you roll them too thin, you just won't get a nice, a nice lift on your scones. So just a little bit more. And just keep moving and, and turning so that you get a nice even thickness. That's probably about right. Okay, there we are. And then whatever size you want, we've got quite a small fluted cutter. You can make plain or fluted and you can make big or small, whichever you want. And just put a little bit of flour on the cutter and then just press straight down into the mix and pop them onto a baking tray. So you'll see, although it was a very soft mix, don't let that scare you because it does come okay. You just need to let it sit for a minute or two just to let the liquid absorb and then you've got something that you can handle. So we're just going to cut out enough to fill this baking tray just to show you how it's done. And what you do is once you've got all your scones cut, you just bring the dough again as gently as you can together on your floured worktop. Join up all the little bits and get rid of the creases if you can. And then you just start again. So we'll get the rolling pin back and roll again, keeping around the same thickness as we had the first time. Don't go too thin. And then off we go again, just cutting shapes until you've used up all of the dough. Right, we're just about there. I'm just gonna do one more quickly, just to fill the tray. Kids would love doing this, so if you've got some time off with the kids in the October holidays, or if you're making some treats for Halloween, this will be a good one to do. Messy, but good. Children in black treacle, <laughs> possibly not the best combination, but there we are. So there we have it, so we've got nine scones. I'm gonna pop them in the preheated oven. We can use this a little bit as well. This is what I always call the baker's treat. I always put this on a little tray and have it myself just to make sure that they're okay, but we'll put that to one side. So we've got our nine scones, little scones. I'm gonna put them now into the preheated oven. Our scones are now ready, so let's take a wee look. Okay, smell so good and they're nicely risen as you can see. So what we're going to do now is just pop them onto our little big cooling tray, I should say, and just let them completely cool. I'm just going to use my fingers actually, they're hot, but we'll just quickly do that. It's easier. Um, so onto a nice wire tray like so, and then like they did in the olden days, and I still do, <laughs> is I like to cover them with a, a towel just to keep them nice and soft while they cool. And then I'm gonna show you a nice interesting way to serve them. Right, so our scones are nicely cooled. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm gonna show you a slightly different way to serve these. That's something that's quite new to me that I discovered quite recently. And what this is called is a thunder and lightning. So for those of you that aren't familiar with that expression with regard to serving a scone, um, you will be familiar, of course, with a cream tea, which is a, a regular scone with jam and cream 
and strawberry jam cream, that type of thing. A thunder and lightning is a scone. It can be a regular scone or a treacle scone like ours and you serve it with uh, cream, whipped cream or clotted cream and just a very small drizzling of black treacle or golden syrup, I believe you can use either. Um, the idea of a thunder and lightning, I believe, is a traditional Cornish um, dish and um, it can be served, as I said, with a scone or with a bread roll, a Cornish split as it's called, with cream, um, a Cornish clotted cream and golden syrup or uh, black treacle. So it's a slightly unusual combination. When I first heard of it, I thought, I'm not sure if I really like that idea, but I have to say, I absolutely love it. I think it's really, really delicious. And I prefer the black treacle to the golden syrup, which is a wee bit sweet for me, but that's just my personal taste. So give it a whirl, see what you think, give it a try, and I'll show you um, quickly just how to do it. So our cooled scones are here. I've taken one scone and I've already broken it in half. You'll see they're lovely and dark and, and light inside. So what I'm gonna do now is serve it up. And in this little dish here, we've got some delicious Cornish clotted cream, and this is just absolutely to die for. I think this is so, so good. It's basically a Cornish cream that's been scalded um, with, in, a, in a hot bath of water so that it kind of cooks it slightly and you end up with this delicious crust on the top. And it's just so creamy and probably loaded with calories and fat, obviously. Uh, but let's not worry about that. Um, it's very, very good, very tasty. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this. It's lovely and thick and creamy, as you can see. And I'm just going to spread that onto the base of the scone like so. And you can be as generous as you wish with the cream, okay? And next up, we've got our black treacle. I'm sure you're all familiar with um, black treacle. It's looked exactly the same for years and years and years. The tins don't ever change, which I think is quite a nice, quite nostalgic looking product. So just take a little bit on your spoon and then just trickle it over the cream. You don't need too much. Just be aware not to add too much because it can be a little bit overpowering the treacle it's quite strong flavored so just add a little bit as so okay and i'm going to put that to one side and then you just take your the, the top of your scone and pop it on like so to get rid of that knife and what i'm going to finish off with is just a very little dusting of icing sugar like that and then it's perfect to serve with a nice refreshing cup of tea there we go. So if you fancy a thunder and lightning, that's how to do it. As I say, be as generous with the clotted cream as you like, um, but just a little bit of the treacle and it works beautifully and it works very nicely with the treacle scones or with plain scones. So um, give it a whirl and see how you get on. And if you do get around to trying the recipe, uh, remember to put a picture up on our Facebook or Twitter page and we'd like to see, see what you're doing. So there we go, uh, a thunder and lightning. As I say, treacle scones perfect for Halloween. So if you want to do a bit of baking with the kids for Halloween, treacle scones, just as they are with a bit of butter, also very good as well. So I hope you enjoyed that recipe. Thank you for watching.